Hello and welcome to a Blowing Bubbles special edition of Your Shout. Normally we just have people said to be in videos, giving me their comments and their opinions. On this episode we've got the editor of the Blowing Bubbles magazine, which you can see here. That's David, who is also joined by Greg, Emily and Holly. They're going to be talking about some of the articles that they've written and talking about some of the current hot topics at West Ham. Although I should probably point out at this juncture that these videos were sent to me on Friday afternoon before the the debacle that was a 3 nil hammering at home to Brighton Hove Albion so just please bear in mind that they don't know that result at the point of sending the videos but I obviously will respond with that result in mind to whatever questions they ask okay without further ado first up we have David who is the editor and founder of this fine magazine over to you David Hey Gonzo, hope you're doing well buddy. Um, the new issue of Blowing Bubbles is of course out, it's October's issue, and look who we got on the front cover. The main man himself, Pele. We were chuffed, absolutely chuffed, to get this chat with Pele where he talks about his love for Bobby Moore, and also about the possibility of playing for West Ham, wouldn't that have been nice? Um, the question that I have for you this month, Gonzo, is relating to our new signings. Which of our new summer signings have impressed you and won you over and which of our summer signings haven't quite won you over yet. Okay, thank you very much, David. I've not actually listened to any of these videos as of yet. I listened to the first five seconds. They're moving into place. I like to keep it as fresh as possible. So you'll have to excuse me if I've not done any preparation in this, but I'd like to answer it as honestly as I can. I, the first one that springs to mind, and this is not somebody who I think has been the best, has been Anatovic. I think he's let the manager down um, by getting the elbow, um, by elbowing the fella at uh, away to Southampton. I saw him banned for three games. Uh, it's a record signing. He's been nothing short of shocking quite frankly so certainly not him I think Joe Hart has been patchy and um, but he's not been helped by the fact that the team is struggling and this seems to be an ongoing thing the team is constantly struggling I doubt he's ever had any period in his career where he's letting as many goals as he has at the start of his, his West Ham career that, that's for sure um, Chicharito Xavier Hernandez we know what his best position is the fans do I'm not sure the manager does I think we need to see the best out of him by playing in a two. I think it's really weird that you would cover somebody and uh, go after somebody, which is by Billich's own admissions, he has done for two or three years, wanted to purchase Xavier Hernandez, that you would cover somebody and target somebody and scout somebody for three years, then get them on board and not really know how to deploy them. But I actually think that's indicative of Slav himself. I don't think he knows what formation he really wants to play so um, we've not seen the best of him but that doesn't mean to say he is a bad signing um, the standout signing for me of the summer has been Zabaleta I was a little bit worried by his age when he first came in and I've been proven wrong he's an absolute leader he should probably be the captain at the moment and he he's got no affiliation with the club he's got no history with the club but he seems to have bought into West Ham. He seems to have made an attachment with the fans. And that's... In a modern-day footballer, I really do think that that is something that's, that's very, very rare and something that's very, very welcome. So there we go. I'm going to go with Pablo Zabaleta. Right, next up... Um, you'll have to excuse me, I think. Let me just double-check for you. Next up, we've got Emily, my pal Emily. And she obviously, just like everybody else, writes for Blowing Bubbles magazine. Let's hear what Emily has got to say. Hey Gonzo, it's Emily and I am here with the latest issue of Blowing Bubbles magazine. So in this latest issue I took a look at Cheku Kiate and his performance so far this season. So I don't think anyone's gotten off to a great start this year. Um, but I'm not sure that Kiate is living up to his potential. He's been a phenomenal player for the past few years, but I don't know that he's making that much of an impact this year. So my question for you is, is Kiate living up to his potential? Um, is he making as much impact as we've come to expect from him in previous years? And why or why not? Thank you. Uh, hello, Emily. In answer to your question, I don't think he is living up to his potential. I think he's old enough now that we're not talking about potential. So I think, we're, is he achieving the standards that he should be setting? Probably not. Why? Well, I don't think anybody is. I just think everybody is under an absolute cloud at the moment. I just mentioned it about Chicharito. I don't think we know uh, his best position. We all might have our own ideas. I don't think the manager particularly does. I know, as a lot of people think, he should be playing at centre-back. I think the manager sees him as a central midfielder 
he came from Anderlecht. He's been a player of some promise for uh, for quite some time. I was surprised we got him for the money we did, actually. So he had experience of Champions League football, but he pretty much started his career as a centre-back with Anderlecht, although he did play sometimes in sort of central defensive midfield role. Uh, he's a great athlete, great at running round, covers the ground really well. And during his initial time, his first couple of seasons, was worth a few goals each season. Um, again, that seems to have gone by the wayside. Uh, but again, we're in that not only is Bilic not aware of what his best position is in the last game, as you would have not have seen, but you would have done now against Brighton. He was actually utilised as a centre forward. So he started him in central midfield, then chucked him up front um, and then hauled him off. So if that's not confused thinking, I don't know what is. Do I think there's more to come of him? Much, much more. Do I think he's going to be a world beater? I've heard some people say he's, he's the next Yaya Torre. Well, he's, he's not at that standard, that's for sure. But I think he's a good player for us. He's certainly good enough for West Ham. And I think there's a lot more to come from him. But I, I don't want to just single him out. I think there's a lot more to come from everybody. Certainly not on his own. Right, next up. And I know I know this is management related. Because when Greg sent it over to me. He, he, he basically outlined roughly what the uh, what it was about. So anyway, I'll leave it. I've not listened to it. I've got a, I've got a clue. I'll let you guys listen. And then, uh, yeah, let's try and discuss what Greg has to say after the end of the clip. Hi right, guys, uh, Greg Richardson, Blam Bubbles magazine. Uh, my article this month is on a potential Slav and Bilic replacement, and the name I'm chucking in the ring is Sean Dyche. Um, I was surprised as well, but actually, the more you think about it, he's a really decent option for us. Um, some of the other candidates we've been uh, linked with, Tushul, uh, the geezer from Napoli, they're not going to sign for us. They'll have bigger fish sniffing around them. Um, Eddie Howe. I don't think he's as good as people make out. I think if you look at Burnley and Bournemouth this season and who you think might get relegated, Bournemouth are much more likely to go down. Sean Dyche sets up his team um, to be organised, to work hard, to be disciplined and be hard to beat. Um, they're the qualities I think we need at the club at the moment. I think we've got good attacking options, but we've got a soft underbelly. And I think when things get hard, we roll over. A Dyche team doesn't roll over. Um I've likened him in the article to a more likeable, left, less divisive Sam Allardyce. And I think Sam brought a lot of good things to the football club. He upset people. Deitch won't do that. He's much more humble, much more meaningful, gets the fans on side. And I think all of that in the mix would make Deitch a decent option for us. I'm not saying he's the greatest manager in the world, but I think he could do a job for us and make us better than what we currently are. Um... I think also you look at the club that he's at, it must be really hard getting people to sign for Burnley. Um, no offence to Burnley, a little bit of offence. Um, but it'd be easier to attract players that can take us on. I think he could get us to be a consistent top eight side because uh, we'd be difficult to beat, decent attacking. He likes to get the ball wide, so do we. He likes to get shots away, I'd like to see that. Um, and I think he could do a really good job for us. Like I say, he's, I'm not saying he's the best possible candidate, but we've got a shortlist of Rafa Benitez or Rafa Benitez. And um, I think Dyche is someone that we shouldn't overlook just because he's a little old Burnley. Um, so I, I do think he's an option for us, but I'd like to see what you guys think. Cheers. Uh, thanks very much, Greg. I did. I, I like the no offence to Burnley. Well, a little bit of offence. Um, uh, what can I say? Uh, again, with the benefit of hindsight, we've lost just us 3-0 since you recorded that video. And so have Burnley, actually, although that was a, to Man City. Yeah, that's no disgrace at the way they're playing at the moment. The short answer is I think anybody would be an improvement on Bilic. I, I don't... I, I, feel, I feel a bit bad. I've got to say, I feel a bit bad digging him out, but you can't avoid the situation forever, that's for sure. And I think whether it's tactically, which was has been my opinion... Since the start, if you look at the preview, we did a Hammers Chat preview. I think I didn't think he would last season, and I think he is short tactically, Bilic. Um, but there's now bigger issues for him as well. He seems to have he seems to have trouble motivating. Seems to have people are saying he's lost the dressing room. I don't know. I I wouldn't. I couldn't say. I'm not in the dressing room. I wouldn't know. So, but there's certainly something very very wrong. Um, I think if he hasn't lost the dressing room, I think he's certainly lost the fans, and I think he's certainly lost the owners. And surely, if you lose the owners, you lose the fans, and you're tactically not very good. That is enough to get most people to sack 
in the modern day, which leads us to believe, um, leads us to discuss the replacement, which becomes more important and more pertinent than when you recorded the video because of the loss. So it's the hot topic at the moment. Um, I, I, I don't know about Daesh, but I do think anybody would be an improvement, like I say. Uh, is he a more humble version of Sam Allardyce? Um, it's, it's not hard. I mean, Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo is probably more humble than Sam Allardyce. The man absolutely loves himself. Um, could he organise a team? Yes, but let's not forget that it wasn't really the Allardyce's lack of humility towards the end that was rubbing everybody up the wrong way. He did that with the ear cupping and all the rest of it. What rubbed people up the wrong way was actually his, his brand of football. He's stumbled, much like Sven has done. Sven stumbles upon a formation and everyone else susses it out and then he reverts and does something else. Um, Allardyce stumbled on something. Basically, Andy Carroll was injured. Kevin Nolan was injured. Uh, he didn't want to bring in Sacco. I think David Sullivan brought in Sacco. And we brought in Valencia. And he got someone in Stuart Downing, who had never played in that position, who he'd bought as a winger, to play behind, a, in essence, a, a front two or a front three, whatever you want to say. We also had Zerati at that point, um, particularly in those early games, was playing very, very well. So we sort of had this formation of... Stuart Downing and Zerati and Sacco and Valencia and it was doing very very well and up until a certain point it was certainly something near to Christmas we were riding quite high in the league and then Allardyce uttered those uh, immortal words which were we've got to find a way to get Kevin Nolan and Andy Carroll back in the team well he did so and we went on I think it was probably our worst run in 28 years after those guys came back into the team. Uh, um, Kevin Nolan couldn't hit a donkey's ass with a banjo. Uh, Andy Carroll was, well, was not at his best. And um, Stuart Downing, who had got into the England team off the back of playing behind the front two, was pushed back onto the wing. Uh, Valencia was moved out as he was sort of a wide substitute. And... Sacco, who, who had at one point, I think he scored seven goals in seven games or, or something like that, six goals, six games, whatever, he was a very, very prolific striker at the time, um, was was very much moved to play second fiddle behind Andy Carroll. And we went on a terrible run and the football was terrible. And that was what saw the end of Allardyce because it had come to the end of his contract. It wasn't, it wasn't because he was arrogant, which he is. And I just think we're in a similar situation with, with Slav now. The football was absolutely atrocious. We're shipping goals. And I just wonder if we need to get someone like Sean Dyson. Dice I think we deserve and we've earned a little bit of entertainment, a little bit of flamboyance. When we moved to the stadium, we were promised that we would be moving on to bigger and better things. And it's just not happened. The move to the stadium was supposed to facilitate a bigger transfer budget and better players, more high-quality players coming in. Well, if we're going to get better, high-quality, more expensive players in then I want us to basically have a little bit more than pragmatism. So I wouldn't go for Dyche. I would go for uh, Silva at Watford. If you've got to pay four or five minutes to get him out of his contract, do it. Just do it. For once, let's not scrimp or scrape on the managers we come in. Let's do it. But the sounds coming out of the club now are that actually everybody's still at their club. So it looks like we're not going to try and buy somebody out of their club. So we're looking for someone that's out of work at the moment. Might even be Allardyce again. But you know what? I've got no faith in a top-level manager coming in. You're quite right that Tuchel and people like that will not come to this club because I just don't think the owners will highlight them. We're, we're as likely to get Alex McLeish, and that is the absolute truth about it. I, I, I'm, I'm very, very quickly losing faith with the whole situation. Having said that, if you offered me now, I had one choice. Would I swap Slavon Bilic with Sean Dyche? Greg, the answer is yes, mate. Okay, bit long-winded, wasn't it? But anyway, next up, last up, we have got Holly. No idea what Holly's going to talk about, so let's have a listen. Hiya, it's Holly. So a question that's been floating around quite a lot is whether we should be focusing more on the league or the League Cup. So in my eyes, it's an absolute no-brainer. We have to focus on the league. We don't have enough points. We're going to absolutely kick ourselves if we don't start moving up the league soon. So it's very important for us to do that. Um, I'd absolutely love to say focus on a cup run because I think that obviously winning a cup could do great things in terms of the January transfer window, getting noticed a little bit more. We could smash Spurs. That would be absolutely brilliant. But I just think it's too important at the 
the moment that we actually start moving up and getting points. So I do think that there are positives to come from this. We've got Martinez who's just scored a hat-trick against Man United's under 23s. Everyone is calling for him to get into the first team and for some reason he's just not getting put in. So this could be his chance to prove himself, show what he can do and do well for us. So on the bright side we do have a very very good squad that are not necessarily our normal starting 11 that could actually do great things for us in the cup run. So I'm going to say focus on the league but fingers crossed we can do well in the cup as well. So my question to you Gonzo is should we focus on the league or the league cup? Uh, great points Holly. Uh, in answer to your question I, I'm still a cup man. I still want us to to win the cup. I really do. I can't ever lose faith. I don't think we're a good enough team to say, oh, well, you know what, we'll we'll forget the League Cup and then we'll, uh, we'll just pick it up and concentrate on the FA Cup. We've not won anything since 1980, so we just don't have the ability to do that. Having said that, um, we're 16th, I believe. We're just hovering above the relegation zone and the points certainly would dictate that we've got to concentrate on the league and try our very best. However, I don't think the squad's confidence is good enough uh, to be cherry picking which games to play. Even if they did change five or six of their lineup, it's still the squad. They still train together, they still eat together. And I just think if we went and got thumped, and you said smash Tottenham, that sounds lovely, but I do think if we went up there, went up to Wembley and got thumped, then the chances of what is already quite a downbeat um, squad who are, who are not confident, who are not motivated, the chances of them losing heavily. Uh, or just losing it all to Tottenham and traipsing off the pitch with their shoulders hunched and then suddenly flicking a switch and turning it on against Crystal Palace it's just not going to happen uh, Crystal Palace are nobody's mugs Roy Hodgson might have done quite poorly with England and losing to Iceland but that man knows how to organise a defence uh, particularly in the Premier League and with every passing game that defence will become better and better drilled I just don't think that I just don't think that we can turn it on. I don't think that we can suddenly flick the switch. As I, as I said, we actually need to build confidence here. So I think you, the idea is to go to Tottenham, maybe make one or two changes, but not make a ton of them. Go to Tottenham and start building some confidence. Just come away with their result. Nick a 1-0 win. That is probably the best way to then prepare for the Crystal Palace game. Winning would ensure more chance of victory against Crystal Palace than putting the reserves out losing then going to Crystal Palace it wouldn't happen you do make a good point about the reserves and about the under 23s they played the um, Manchester United under 23s of course Tony Martinez who you spoke of got a hat trick in that um that Fernandez played well and of course as did Nathan Holland and Declan Rice who's played very well today because we've just drawn against Chelsea which is which is great for a newly promoted team which the under 23s are to go to a club like Chelsea who are famous for hoovering up a lot of the best talent around Europe they do it as a means to make money it's, it's almost their their business model is to bring on young players so they, they've got a load of young talent there and for us to go there and get a draw after beating Man U is very very good um, we know Declan Rice can be in the first team in fact I don't know why Declan Rice isn't in the first team at the moment I'm pretty sure um Nathan Holland can play in the first team. I don't know about Martinez yet. I'm not entirely sure. But he deserves a chance. Surely he does. With Sacco, I don't know whether Sacco's injured or he's... I, I just don't. You just don't know with that man. You don't know what's going on. Um, Andy Carroll is obviously suspended, but it's not been pulling up any trees anyway. So our only fit striker and... You just have to say firing. And to say firing because he scored three goals this season. Xavier Hernandez. So with that in mind you would expect Tony Martinez to at least be featuring on the bench. What I would say with Tony Martinez is, if you're not featuring on the bench, when Carroll's injured, and when Sacco is injured, and when he's prepared to play Cheku Kiate up front, you're probably not going to feature. Uh, that's that's the truth of the matter. So, um, he's got some options there. If he wants to mix it up a bit, he can play Masuaku, he can play Fernandez, he can play Andre Ayu. There are other players he can play to freshen it up a bit. He can bring Ogbonna in, who, of course, has, uh, has, has liked a controversial tweet suggesting Bilic should be sacked in the week. So, is he going to get into the team at all? Uh, we've got a reserve keeper in Adrian, who's probably would be chomping in a bit, but the word is that he wants to leave as well. It's not a happy camp. A lot of these guys who would go into that match, and I'm not talking about the young guys, I am talking about people like Ayu and Adrian and people like that, are probably not going to be happy anyway. Um, Sam Barham certainly would deserve a chance at right back, and it might be wise to give someone like Zabaleta a rest, but 
in answer to your question, I wouldn't prioritise either. I'd probably make two or three changes for the Tottenham game, but go there to win it. It's the only way, and I tell you what, never mind it buying Slaven Bilic some time, it would buy the owners some time, because make no mistake about it, um, the manager will be the first person at any club that gets the stick. He absolutely will. But if the owners don't act, and the managers we saw with Avram Grant, then basically the attention on the terraces starts to turn towards them. So they really need to make a decision on this, and they need to do it very, very quickly. If that doesn't happen, then the results have to turn around. But it's constant moving of the goalposts by suggesting that uh, he's now got two games. Well, hold on a second. Just before the game, he did an interview saying he was going to have to the rest of the season. Earlier on, he had, and in the season, he had four games. You, you can't quite, you can't keep stumbling from one deadline to the next deadline to the next deadline. We need some clear, concise thought and some purpose in a decision-making at the top. But that's got nothing to do with Tottenham or Crystal Palace, has it? That's just my little rant. But as I say, all this stuff was recorded before before the Brighton game, and everyone's pretty, pretty downbeat, as I am sure that David, Holly, Emily and Greg all are. Um, I'm going to leave it for there. Thank you very much. Um, you can... You, Get Brian Bowles magazine. It's, they don't pull any punches. You can look at this one. Never as this looked so apt. Um, they get some good interviews. Get interviews with players. They get interviews um, with the owners as well. Whew, I'd like to throw a few questions at them at the moment, wouldn't we? Um, it's a good read. Um, funny enough, mine's actually my Pele one is actually up in the in the bath at the moment. <laughs> No, it's not, it's not wet. It's not in the bath. It's next to the bath. Uh, really good read. You can also just read it. You can read the previous month's edition for free online. I'll put the link to the website below. And it's also on our app, the West Ham app. You'll notice the West Ham app. It's got that Hammers Chat sign, wherever that is. The Hammers Chat logo there. Um, download. It's had loads of improvements, by the way. We've had a lot of upgrades on the West Ham Hammers Chat app. Uh, big shout out to our sponsor, Noble Holidays. Click the link below if you're looking to get away and get a break. We all need a break, don't we? Um, join us. We have got a lot of videos this week. I'll be doing a vlog over on the main channel. So this is not the main channel. This is the forum channel, which gives all the fans their voices and their chance to have a say. Don't forget to subscribe here on the main channel. We'll be doing a vlog, Tottenham vlog. We're doing a Crystal Palace vlog. We'll have previews, reviews, moans, whinges, all that sort of thing. Anyway, um, enjoy what is what remains of your weekend. By the time I process this video, it'll probably be Sunday night anyway. Uh, keep, keep your tails up. Keep your peckers up. Things have got to change, haven't they? You'd hope so.